Hi there everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be analyzing AMD's quarterly report actually which came out on August 2nd, 2022. And when it came out I said, you know what, I want to see how Intel's and AMD's did side by side to see if maybe Intel's situation is like a sector wide thing or is it only an Intel related thing. Hopefully the former, not the latter, but let's actually analyze the quarterly reports from AMD and Intel to see what we can learn. So with that said, guys, let's get started. So here we are, guys, on AMD's quarterly gap financial results. As you can see right here, we have Q2 of 2021. They did around $3.8 billion to Q2 of 2022, guys, $6.55 billion. They're up 70%. Now, if we actually take a look at Intel's same exact time frame, they were actually, if you guys remember, they went from 19.6 billion to 15.3 billion. That is down 22%. So right then and there, guys, that is a massive, massive differential when it comes to these two companies. When it comes to their revenue alone, yeah, AMD right now, it is definitely significantly better than that of Intel. And if we actually take a look at their net income, we can see that they did go down from the previous year of $710 million to today, guys, of 447. That is a decrease of 37%. However, if we take a look at Intel's, we can see that for the net income, it was at 109% loss, significantly worse than that of AMD. And lastly, looking at AMD's earnings per share, it actually went down to 27 cents per share, which was down 53%, whereas Intel's, it was down 109% from $1.24 last year to negative $11 this year. So overall, guys, AMD did pretty much amazing right they crushed it significantly more than that of intel and even on top of that guys this is a quote from the chair and ceo where they pretty much just said we delivered our eighth straight quarter for a record revenue base on our strong execution and expanded product portfolio said amd chair and ceo dr lisa sue each of our segments grew significantly year over year led by the higher sales of our data center and embedded products we see continued growth in the back half of the year highlighted by our next generation five nanometer product shipments supported by our diversified business model. So overall, the company's actually projecting a really, really good guidance in the future, whereas Intel, not necessarily. And this essentially caused AMD's share price to pretty much skyrocket. I believe when I did my video, it was at around like the, what, $96? And on that day, I do believe it did go down to $95. However, after that, it did skyrocket to the current share price, ending the week at $102.31. Now here's the problem with this current share price. My analysis still remains roughly the same. Now, obviously, does this change anything in my analysis? Absolutely. Obviously, once the year ends, we'll do an analysis on AMD once again and see if maybe my target share prices change. However, guys, take a look at this. When I did my video, I was putting in the revenue growth at 18% in the next five years, right? For the lowest assumption, as well as my projected share buyback at negative 50%. And that is still getting me, guys, a $10 price tag for AMD at the lowest assumption. Now, assuming that this year goes as good as they're projecting, do I foresee that their revenue may grow higher than 18% in the next five years or so? Sure, why not, right? But by how much is actually the question. I am not one to say that AMD's chips are worse than Intel's because I hold the opinion that they're actually not. In fact, I even said in this video that my laptop that I'm currently recording this in uses an AMD Ryzen chip. I absolutely adore AMD. They are absolutely amazing. However, guys, the fact that the current share price is at $102, to me, that is absolutely ridiculous. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to their projected free cash flow, I'm not saying that they can't break records when it comes to their revenue and their cash flow and all that stuff, but at the current amount that they are at, they still need a long way to go to even justify this $102 per share, even the, the $95 per share, right? Because sure, they may be increasing their revenues year over year. They also have a trend, guys, to also increase their shares outstanding, which we can see right here. They went from 967 million shares to 1.6 billion shares in just the span of 2017 to today. So that right then and there really does hurt the company in general and even just hurts the investor, right? Obviously, a AMD does not pay out a dividend, which pretty much shows that they don't care whether they issue shares or not because they are issuing shares. If they were to pay a dividend, 
this wouldn't be the case. So unfortunately, they are issuing shares at your expense. And the fact that the share price is at $102 today, yeah, I personally think that this is completely absurd. I think that even at $95, it was absurd. I think that at the lowest 52-week range of $71.64, it was still absurd. So as it stands, guys, even if the revenue comes in really, really good by the end of the year, you know, the most I can do is just increase my projections to like one, two, or three more percentage points. And even then, it still wouldn't justify this current share price of $102.31. Maybe if they were to start buying back shares. But overall, I still stand by the fact that Intel probably just had like a bad quarter. Maybe he's even having like a bad year. When it came to the free cash flow, they specifically said the cash flow will come down because we are investing in the company. They are making a... Uh, a plant in Ohio, which is going to dig right into their free cash flow. But when it came to their revenue, they did significantly worse than that of AMD, and we can see it right here. I still think that Intel has a lot of prospects in the future. I think that they may just be having like a bad year. You know, Intel should definitely take this AMD report to be like, okay, we definitely need to amp up our R&D and make better chips because we cannot let AMD take this market share, right? So I think that's where we're at right now. That pretty much is it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help you with the algorithm on YouTube. So with that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next video.